Hello, glory be to God, compliments of the season. You're welcome in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today, we're going to consider the topic that is, says it is written about you. It is written about you. Let us pray. Lord our God, we know you have a plan for us. Your plan is to prosper us. Your plan for us is that of good and not of evil. Your plan for us is not to perish, is not to go home empty-handed. Therefore, Lord, we ask that as we hear your word, open the windows of heaven and let there be a blast of commands from your very throne that will penetrate our bones and marrows and spirits and soul and our bodies to awaken us from every sleep. Give us redirection. Lord, rekindle our visions and help us to be at a light. Even as our days are running so fast, let our days not be a waste. But Lord, help us to utilize every single opportunity, making the best of the time in the name of Jesus. May your word heal us. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Looking at the world, it's like we are born into this world, we pass through this world, become successful according to the terms of humans and the dictates of our society, according to the culture and tradition of wherever we find ourselves. And then we grow old and finally pass on in good age. That's what many of us call success. That's what many of us call fulfillment. And when you see the posters of some people, uh, when they pass on, it is boldly written on it, a life well spent, celebration of a life well spent. How do we say this person actually spent his days well or not? We are about entering the new year, and this is a message the Lord gave me to preach. This message is titled, It is Written About You. Please, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel, The Narrow is Christ for All Natures, and kindly share this video to everyone in your contact. Share it on Facebook, on YouTube, share it across different platforms. This message is capable of turning the life of someone around. God bless you as you share. Don't forget to comment and like this video too. So let's look at the test for today. Psalm 46 to 9 to 8. Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. Mine ear hast thou opened. Burnt offering and sin offering hast thou not required. Then said I, Lo, I come, in the volume of the book it is written of me. I delight to do thy will, O God, yea, the law is within my heart. It is written about you. There is no single human being that comes to this world without God outlining some plans for him or her. I preached the message and I talked about the true meaning of life. I titled it The True Meaning of Life. Please, if you have not listened to that message, it's going to be of great help to you uh, as far as this message and this topic is concerned. There is nobody that is born into this world that God never had a plan for. God has plans for everyone. God doesn't send people into this world except he has, as he has assigned some 
specific tasks for them. He has assignments for them. This is what is called destiny. God doesn't just predestine people for salvation. He also predestined people for fulfillment of his will, his assignments for them in this world. If you look into the life of Adam before he was born, I mean, before he was created, before Adam was created, God already had a plan for him. He outlined some things. Let us make man in our own image, after our own likeness. And what is he going to do? To have dominion, to be a ruler of this planet Earth. God gave him dominion, and the Earth was his domain. There was a plan, and after man was created, God also brought all the animals he created to Adam so that he can name them. And the Bible says that whatsoever thing he called them, that is what they were called. So God makes advanced plans before he can create people, before he can send anybody into this world. And we have some we have so many examples in the Bible. People whose births were announced before they were born. Their births were announced. Let's look at, uh, if you look at the life of uh, people like Isaac, look at the life of Ishmael, look at the life of Isaac, even before Ishmael was born, God had a plan for him before he was born. Even while he was very young, before he could think and plan for his future, God already said he was going to bless him, that he's going to be a great nation. There are two specific nations in the world right now. Uh, that, I mean, nations that have two common ancestors, ancestors, ancestors. Jacob, which is Israel, and Isaac and Ishmael, these people, they have plans that God already mapped out for them, even before they were born. Look at the life of Jacob and Esau. Look at the life of Joseph. God revealed to him plans that he is going to be in the position of authority. But before he was born, the plan for his life had already been outlined. God told Abraham that his descendants would go to a foreign land and be there, and he would bring them back. So God had to make Saint Joseph ahead of them in order to fulfill his plans. Do you think you were here for nothing? You are not here for nothing. You were here for a plan. We are here for business. So when Jesus Christ wants you to occupy till he returns, he wants you to be doing what is written about you. Look at the life of Samson. Look at the life of Samuel, Moses, Jesus Christ. God had plans for all these people. There was something that was, that was written about these people. It is written about you too. Let's look at the psalm again. Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. Mine ear has thou opened. A lot of us think that, oh, when we come to this world, we're going to give sacrifice to God. We're going to give offering. That is not the number one thing. It is not a sin to offer sacrifice. It is not a sin to offer offering. But there is a specific assignment that God has given to you. There is something that is very, very important. That is the fulfillment of your destiny. Mine ear has thou opened, my ear has thou pierced. You, your ears need to be open so that you can hear God's plans for your life. 
you need the Holy Spirit to pierce your ears open. Not to offer the usual sacrifice and offering. You need opening of the ear of your spiritual man. So that you can hear. So that you can submit. Look at verse 7. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the books. It is written of me. There is a book that is written of you. And that is why the psalmist says, I delight to do thy will, O God. I delight to do your will. Because you wrote these things about me. So for me to fulfill them, I need to do your will. Jesus Christ, before he was born, there was a plan for him. The plan was to fulfill the will of God. Look at Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. This is the description of Jesus' dominion on earth. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. This is what is written about him. This psalm is about Jesus Christ. Psalm 46 to 8. It's about Jesus Christ. There is a book that is written about you. You uh, as an individual. There is something that is written about you. You need to discover this particular thing. It is high time parents pray about their children to know exactly what God has sent these children into this world to do. I knew mine, even as a child, that I would become a pastor. I knew it. And when I discovered that my single mom couldn't pay my school fees and I was struggling, to go to school. I started paying my own school fees from primary school. About two weeks ago, or was it last week? Last week, someone asked me. He said, if you had this rough childhood, why is it that you never gave up? And started misbehaving like what many of these youths do. And they give excuse of nobody helping them. One of the things I told him is that I knew who I would become. God already showed me. He already showed me my future. Apart from the word of God and the comfort of the Holy Spirit, nothing has ever encouraged me in this world more than the future that God had already shown me. I remember these things. I wrote them down. Early 2000, many of the things he showed me, I wrote them down. And they encourage me. When I see them coming to pass, they encourage me. When I was in secondary school and realized that, oh, there's nobody to pay my school fees. And I knew I would become a pastor. I gave a lot of attention to English language. I said, well, uh, I don't need a university degree to preach, but I need English to be effective. So I gave extra time to English language. English is never my first language. My mom is unschooled. Uh, she only finished her primary school education. But I had to give a lot of attention to English language because I knew my future. I knew then that 
If I am good in English, I will be able to communicate God well to people in English. There is something that is written about you. Do you know it? Or are you just living like every other person? Discover God's will for your life. We are about entering a new year. Do you know God's will for your life? Do you know what God has planned for you? Do you? Do you know God's plans for your life? Or you are living like every other person? Listen, there is a book that is written about you. And when Jesus Christ says, Occupy till I come. And Paul says, make the best use of every opportunity. It is because there is a day we will give account of everything we have done in the body. Remember the parable of the talents. When, when we come into this world, we come here with a lot of things, with gifts, spiritual gifts. I, I know we, we come here naked, empty-handed, but there are things that the visible eyes cannot see that we come here with. Physically, we come naked, empty-handed, but we, we are not empty. We are not without talents. We are not without destinies. We are not without gifts from God. We are not without something that is written about us. We are not without assignments. And when we are living this world, the moment the soul departs from the body, the memory of it is time to give account with Don and us. We, the moment the spirit leaves the body, I tell you the truth. The only thing we would think of is how do I give account to my maker? How to give account? How to give account? The definition of our concerns will change. Today, if you ask the average man or the average Christian, especially this period, the end of the year. What is your concern? They're going to tell you achievements, things, New Year resolutions, things they want to achieve, financial plans. Only you see someone telling you about fulfilling God's plans for their lives. God has a plan for us. How are you going about it? How are you going about these plans? That God has for you. How are you living your life? Listen to this hymn. Or just read with me. Must I go and empty handed? Thus my ready my meet. Thus my dear ready my meet. Not one day of service give him. Lay no trophy at his feet. Must I go and empty handed? Must I meet my Savior so? Not one soul which we should greet him. Must I go? Must I empty and it go? Are you going to meet your maker empty handed? Is there nothing you were holding in your hand to give to him? I was telling an elderly man, a man God used me to convert to Christianity. I told him that I want you to make heaven. You know, recovery from this sickness is not my primary aim. It is good you get well, but my primary aim, my utmost wish is that you make heaven. Let me be rest assured that, okay, this is the soul I have won for Christ. I want to see you in my record. I want to see your name in my record. Are you going to meet your maker empty-handed? At the first place, have you ever asked yourself, 
What are you here for? I know my assignment. I know my assignment. Number one is to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. To preach the truth. Not to pastor in a church. To preach. To evangelize. I know I have prophetic gifts. I have different gifts. But the number, my main calling is to preach. And also to help the poor. So it's ridiculous for people seeing me setting up a charity organization 2017. How much does it have? I was being paid 30 something thousand naira, which is less than $30. But I had to set up a charity organization. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> but it was the call of God. And I had to fulfill God's call. And today, there are about 90 children. They are over 90 now. On our scholarship scheme. Some of them, we feed them, clothe them, medical, housing, allowance. Yes. It's ridiculous. Some of you see me wear this thing most times. Uh, it's not costly. Uh, it's not because I don't have money to buy good clothes. But I know the purpose of my existence. I know why I put on this. Apart from moderation, let me not say too much. It is not about me. It is about the gospel. So let me not say too much about myself. What is your assignment in this world? Are you going to lament when you live here? Look at stanza 2 and stanza 3. Not at death I shrink nor falter. For my Savior saves me now. But to meet him empty-handed, thought of that now clouds my brow. This man, the writer of this hymn, says, It's not that I'm afraid of death. No, because my Savior saves me now. The thoughts that have beclouded me is going to meet him empty-handed. A pastor, a colleague of mine, died recently. We worked in the same church. And I was telling someone that, do you know that now he has gone to stand before his maker? And we are on the queue. How many of us are aware that we are on the queue? May God help us. We are on the queue. Going to beat our maker. Listen to what Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 9 and 10. Wherefore we labor. Brethren, please labor. Labor. Don't look at anybody. Don't compare your spiritual life with those who don't care, labor. Wherefore we labor, that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgments of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he had done, whether, be good, whether it be good or bad. Let us labor. For we shall also stand before our maker. Let's continue. Stanza 3 of the hymn says, All the years in sinning wasted, could I but recall them now, I would give them to my Savior, to his will, I'd gladly bow. Do you know that there will be a lot of regrets in heaven? Yeah, there are lots of people who are going to regret. When they find out that, oh, it is actually my work, that I will be re rewarded for. When they find out that there's difference between reward and salvation, they are going to regret that, oh, I should have been more serious with the work of God. I should have been more serious with 
evangelism. I should have been more serious with giving to the work of God. I should have been more serious with my pastoral assignments. Please, let's be serious. There is no more time. Look as it stands for. All ye saints of rouse, be earnest. Up and work while yet, yet tis day. Uh, the night of death overtake thee. Strive for souls while ye, while still you may. Strive for souls while still you may. Now let us work. Do that which the Lord has called you to do. Do it earnestly and sincerely. Let's be hard working. For the night is coming when no man shall work. Listen to what Ecclesiastes says. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses 1, 12, 13, and 14. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, not the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. 11. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Let us therefore the, let us Hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is a whole duty of man. 14. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. We shall all stand before the judgment is the seed of Christ. We have different assignments. Stop imitating people. My calling is unique. Your calling is unique. Your assignment in this world is unique. If everybody becomes a carpenter, who will be the driver? If, every become, if everyone becomes a pilot, then who will drive the car? If everybody becomes a fisherman, who will be the transporter? We have different assignments. Today, everybody claims to be a prophet. Because that is where the money is. That is where the honor is. That is where that is the gift a lot of people are pursuing. Nobody wants to be a teacher except a few. How many people have come up to you and tell you that, well, I'm a teacher of God's word? <laughs> Everybody wants to prophesy. <laughs> I remember Pastor Mensa Otabi in Ghana. He teaches very well. I was listening to him and he said, since the beginning of this ministry, talking about this ministry, he said there had been no many prophecies. But he knows his gifts. His gifts, his gift is teaching. Look at Pastor Sam Adeyemi teaching. This is out the word of God. Teaching. He's a teacher and he's proud of it. But a lot of people who have teaching gifts, they don't want to teach. Because they believe that the money is not there. They want to prophesy. Don't contaminate your gifts because of imitation. Don't work in another person's field. I know a lot of pressure was mounted on me. How was that? You need to become a priest in the Anglican communion. You need to be. I will send you to school. A lot of people told me, you have to go to school, uh, do the uh, ordination courses and become a priest. I told them that God has called me not to be an ordained priest in the church, but to preach his word. A lot of people called me stupid when I resigned 2021, March 2021. I turned out my resignation later. A lot of people called me a fool. But I had to set up the narrowest Christ for all nations, an evangelical ministry. By the special grace of God, we'll be going for crusades when the right time comes. What is your call? What is your assignment in this world? Are you copying another person's answers and pasting them in your answer sheet? We have different questions entirely. 
please this is a new year it is just few days ahead of us have you asked yourself what has god called me to do please sit up there's no more time there's no time sit up and carry out your god-given assignments do you know your destiny have you discovered what is written about you? What is that particular thing that you do so well and whenever you're doing it, your soul finds fulfillment? Are you just being successful in this world but not fulfilled? Is your soul fulfilled? Are you joyful? Do you have this joy that you were doing what you were sent here for. Let us pray. God, thank you for your word that you've given to us today. Help us to discover our assignments in this world. The things that are written about us, help us, Lord. Lord, help us to discover our gifts so that we can live our lives to the fullest. Lord, as we continue to pray and ask you to continue to open our eyes, Lord, open our eyes. Open our eyes to see the way you see us, even before we were born into this world. A day of account is coming when we should give account. Help us, Lord. Cover everyone in this ministry with the blood of Jesus. Cover your finances, your job, your spiritual life, your health, your marriage, your family, your business, everything that concerns you, your apartment, your establishments. I cover everything with the blood of Jesus. I decree upon your life that the Lord will lead you into 2024 safely in the name of Jesus. And as we plan ahead against next year, the Spirit of the Lord will lead you, and the zeal of God Most High will bring everything to fulfillment and fruition in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. I pray for as many who have been supporting this ministry. May the Lord support you. May the Lord open the windows of heaven and release His blessings upon your life. Because you tithe, because you give offering, because you support the weak, the poor, the neglected, in the society, because you are a part of our charity organization, may the Lord surprise you. May the Lord see you through. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayer. Lead all of us into 2024 with joy. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Please share this video. If you need prayers, you want to reach me, my contact details are on the screen. You can visit our website, tnwcfan.org, and contact me. And also, for those of you who want to give, we, uh, those of you who want to give through PayPal, we have PayPal, uh, osanadavid at ymail.com. Look at the description box. You are going to see the link, the donation link to PayPal. And please support us so that we can support, we can um, continue spreading the word of God and also support the needy in our society, especially this festive season. Thank you and God bless you. See you next time. Bye-bye.